In this video, we will walk through the Event Experience section of the Zoom Events Builder. This section contains settings related to what your attendees experience as they engage with your event. First, let's understand the event lobby. Your event lobby is the place where the hosts, speakers, and all attendees join before, during, and after your session to engage with your event. Here they can learn more about your sessions and speakers, download any materials, join the session when it's time, and watch the recording following the session. All of your special roles, your hosts and alt hosts and speakers, can join the lobby at any time leading up to your event. We strongly encourage you to host rehearsals in the lobby itself. This saves you one less meeting to set up and gives everyone practice joining the right session. For your attendees, the join button becomes active minutes before your session begins. Or you can always start your session early. If an attendee is in the event lobby when your session is active, they will receive an auto join pop-up that invites them into your session where they can fully engage. All right, let's build out our lobby page together. As you can see, there's not a lot going on here. We don't have a, a logo, we just have a really simple Tech Talk image. By the way, this was generated with AI Companion. We have our Tech Talk title, date, and uh, a join button. I'm the host, so I can uh, join at any time. Notice we are in preview mode here, which I'll show you how to access in a second. So let's go over to lobby controls. Our lobby page controls are found here. First tab under event experience. And let's take a look at what we see here. First, here's our company logo. It's really uh, pretty self-explanatory, not a whole lot to do here, but let's toggle it on and uh, make sure it looks nice on our lobby. We can refresh our preview of our lobby and there we go. There is our industry logo across the top. We can always drop back into event branding um, to customize all of the colors here, including the header color and the background color. Take a look at our next video, which will specifically cover branding, page builder, email builder, things like that, that help you uh, customize the color and look of your event. All right, let's move now to the main event image. You probably included this right when you initially set up your event, but this page, this image is used throughout your event experience. It's displayed on your event landing page, in your emails, uh, and if you have your content hub up and running. This is your event thumbnail, as it were. So if you need to make any changes, it's right here, easy to uh, fix. Next, we give you the ability to customize your speaker list here. What's nice about this drag and drop, uh, fairly easy to use interface is we've given you the ability to customize your speaker list uh, just for the lobby or by right here in the, in the module, we can customize the speaker list no matter where it's shown. So on our landing page, in our lobby, and even in the uh, session resources as well. So that's really, really nice. We can uh, do some drag and drop there. Let's go and show all of our speakers and we can even feature, let's put Sandy up at the top. She's our CEO, Sandy at the top, and we'll go ahead and, and feature her. Great, let's save that. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Great. We now have our smiling faces. Our speakers look great. You can see Sandy is featured with this simple little badge, picks up our brand colors, and there's her lovely bio. Great. Easy to manage here. Next up, we can add a session description. Right now I have an empty session description, but let's go ahead and do this. I have used a, I have generated a prompt and I'm gonna use AI Companion to help generate a two paragraph description for this webinar. Let's let AI Companion do the heavy lifting here. All right, AI Companion generated some great copy for me to work with. After a little bit of editing, some formatting, getting everything looking exactly the way that I want, I'm really happy with how this looks. I'm ready to add it to my lobby page. As I do, one thing I want to point out is that you can include links in this text box. So if you want to link to your website or to any additional resources that you find would be helpful for your um, event attendees, you can do so right here. So let's go ahead and hit save and take a look at what that looks like in the lobby. All right, there is our beautiful event description, uh, plenty of information that's hopefully uh, compelling and helpful to my event attendees. So we've added a company logo, we've added a masthead, we've added speakers and details. Let's add one more element here, which are downloadable materials. We support up to 50 
PDFs, JPEGs, PNGs, or PowerPoint files. This can be remarkably powerful for both before your session, maybe you have handouts or brochures or one pagers or white papers that you want to share with your audience, or after the fact, maybe you want to upload the PowerPoint deck for everybody to come back to and uh, freely have right at the tips of their uh, fingers when they watch the recording and download the PowerPoint after the fact. Let's upload some files here. I'll just upload a couple. All right, there we go. I have uploaded a few PDFs to help uh, support my session. Let's save and take a look at how those look in my lobby as well. Great, I have now a lobby that's fully built out with uh, speaker bios, details of the session, and uh, relevant reference materials. Super helpful for my attendees. As you can see, it's pretty easy to build out this experience. Shouldn't be too complicated for you at all. All right, let's look at lobby controls. Here we can control the open and close dates and times when we want this lobby experience to be open. You can open this lobby whenever, as early as you want. Some people have strong opinions and like to open it only you know, the day before your session, that's great. And you can keep your lobby open for up to two years following the event. That's what I wanna do, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and kick this all the way out to uh, as far as I can, so well into the future 2027 can keep that there just a reminder what that allows you to do is all of your registered attendees can continue uh, finding this event in their zoom events profile rejoining based on any uh, clicks that they do any anytime they go to join the lobby will will they'll be open and they can access your recording and any of this uh, content that we've built out here We've also recently added the ability to add a disclaimer at the bottom of the lobby homepage. This is particularly important if you have any uh, rules or terms and conditions that you would like to share. Let's go ahead and I'll use AI Companion off, off screen to generate some sample content and we'll drop it in. There we go, I've made some event rules. I can even put links in here. So maybe I wanna link specifically to a privacy policy or something like that. But either way, let's save and take a look at what that looks like. Great, we now have that disclaimer that can be viewed at any time by all of my event attendees. All right, we have built out how our lobby looks, and now it's time to turn our attention to what the attendees will experience when they actually join your session. Again, at some point, the point of this lobby is to bring people into your live session. So let's look at the settings section that dictates what that session actually does and, and what it's like. This is found here under meeting and webinar. Just a reminder here that all of these settings control the default values for these things. And ultimately all of these meetings or webinars are hosted by the hub owner's Zoom account. Very important to remember. You can always take a look at their web portal settings here if you are the hub owner. Really important to always remember who is the hub owner and what settings are toggled on or off on their uh, Zoom account website. All right, webinar video, this dictates how webinar panelists or hosts, how their video is on or off by default when they join the session. Super simple, keep in mind that panelists can always turn their video on even if you toggle this off. This is just the default setting when people come into the webinar to present. Webinar audio section here controls what audio types attendees can join your session using. So do you want phone audio to apply and be turned on? Most people do. And computer audio, that's the standard sort of one. You probably wanna make sure that's enabled along with uh, SIP room system audio information. All right, let's take a look at some of the other options we have to control settings within our webinars. Here we, we can control the default settings for the chat box. So do we want attendees to be able to chat with everybody, hosts and panelists only or no one? Maybe we want chat to be off for our event. You can always change this once you're in the session itself, but uh, I'll go and set this one to everyone. I want it to be a really friendly open event. Here we can toggle on or off HD video quality. Uh, keep in mind if you are in a situation where a lot of viewers are watching from one location, sometimes it's better to drop down to 720, but a lot of people prefer running everything at full HD. 
Same thing here for shared screen video and then Q&A. Again, these are default settings for how Q&A is set up once you get into the session. You can always change these things on the fly. So I can turn Q&A on or off. I can dictate if attendees can submit questions, allow anonymous questions or not. I kind of prefer to have that off personally and then allow attendees to view. So if you want uh, attendees to see only questions that have been answered and responded to, this kind of makes it a, a one way communication where questions come in and no one can see all of the questions until you choose. So as the host, that's great. Or you can allow attendees to view all questions and even allow them to upvote or comment on each other's questions. That's a very free and open way to run Q&A. Up to you how you run. Keep in mind you can change all of these settings once you're in the webinar itself. Here I can enable backstage for my session. If I turn it off, I'll simply have a practice session, which is super, super simple, where everyone can join before, and then I open for attendees, or backstage, which is a more robust uh, experience where my event team, my other presenters can sit backstage for the duration of my webinar. And that's what I want for this one. Be sure to check out our other videos on how to manage backstage. I can also turn on or off, allow a webinar to be live streamed. Uh, this might be helpful if I am sending out, maybe I have a spill over live stream on a, a private viewing site of some sort, maybe hosted on a different platform. Great, you can do that here. And I can turn on or off watermarks. Watermarks allow you to protect any sensitive or private content that you might be sharing and discourages people from taking any screenshots away from your event. This can label label their name, splashes their email address right across all of their uh, content as they view. So you can put that on shared content or video feeds or both and even set uh, opacity levels. I'm going to turn that off. We won't be sharing anything too sensitive in this webinar. Next up, we have our recording section. This is a very important section, uh, maybe one of the most important sections for most events is making sure you get the right recording out of it. Here I have cloud recording enabled on. It's actually locked by my demo account admin. You'll want to make sure cloud recording is on if that's what you're trying to do. Here you can also dictate which main view is captured, active speaker in this case, or gallery view. Gallery view simply captures all open cameras. Any cameras that are on uh, for your panelists will be captured in the, in the recording. I can also review, and this is a strong encouragement, that you spend a second and review all cloud recording settings for the Hub Owners account. Especially if you are new to Zoom events, this is well worth your time to spend some time going through what all you can capture on the recording side. So you see I have quite a bit of these settings, uh, quite a few of these settings locked down here on the Zoom web portal side, but this gives you just a sense of what all can be captured. You can see I can record all different views, active speaker, gallery speaker. I can record audio files for each individual participant if I would like. I can record the interpreters and I can even record the production studio customized view if we were running production studio. So spend a little bit of time and review this. Again, this is for the hub owner. Take a look at this section here. This setting allows us to include access to the cloud recording for registrants and attendees. What's great about this is this includes that watch recording button in the lobby for all registrants and attendees. This is probably what most of us want, so I will go ahead and turn it on. We can also go ahead and toggle on or off, automatically publish the recording once it's available. Some people prefer to have this one suppress. Maybe you want to edit or trim the recording before it goes live in the lobby. Or if you want more of a set it and forget it experience, uh, go ahead and turn this one on. I can also allow my attendees to download the cloud recording from the event lobby. Might be super helpful in more internal use cases or where you're trying to really distribute uh, the recordings to your attendees. Um, most people have this off, but that's not necessarily true in your use case. I can also apply geographic restrictions um, here if I would like to. Final settings here would be to allow local recording. This demo environment has this one locked 
off versus cloud recording locked on. Completely up to you. Local recording can be an incredibly powerful way to record high quality uh, recordings of your sessions. And some people like to just run a cloud recording as a backup for whatever reasons, maybe quicker, quicker access to the recording, something like that. You can toggle that on and then automatically start recording. I love this feature and strongly encourage most event hosts to use it. When you start the session, the recording goes ahead and roll rolls, which is fantastic. I'm happy with these settings, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. The next thing we can customize here is the waiting room. The waiting room is a place where event attendees join the session early and they simply wait. Maybe it's before your session has started for the day. And what's great about Zoom events is we can customize the waiting room on an event by event basis. Let's go ahead and customize our waiting room and see some of the options that we have here. First, we can customize the message from the host. Let's go ahead and type in here. We're glad you're here. That makes a lot of sense for this one. And then we can customize the uh, visual treatment here in the waiting room. So let's start with just a, a simple image. We've given you a few to select from. You can obviously use your event image, your main event image, your, your thumbnail, that's really popular and might be the one that I suggest you start using right away. This gives people a very clear indication that they're in the right place. Or you can leverage uh, some of Zoom's uh, default ones, professional, fun, or inspirational. Those are all in here ready for you to use. In addition, you could bring in your own image. Maybe you have a separate tech talk image that you would like to use. Maybe you have a, an image with some description on it that's a little bit more um, relevant for this event. Maybe you want to show an ad from a sponsor, something like that. Um, in this case, I'll just use a different tech talk image here and we'll see what that looks like. Great, just a different image. Could be really nice to uh, showcase an event sponsor here. Might just be one idea. Our next option of how to customize this is to bring in our company logo with more event description information. So maybe instead of a big bright image, maybe I wanna deliver some more text, give some people some more things to read here. Great, I can upload either my company logo or my event logo, anything like that, and then give it up to a 400 character description. That can be a really nice, nice thing. Maybe you want to display the rules of the event for people before the event starts, something like that you can do or finally you can also display video content here this is super simple uh, video content we've provided some simple examples here's our uh, professional one with some moving flowers fun one with our pogo sticking smiley face guys that's really fun or inspirational rocket ship that's moving through the area or yes you can upload your own video content let's go ahead and take a look at what that might look like Let's go ahead and upload a video. This one is about how Major League Baseball uses Zoom events to power a lot of its operations. Maybe I wanna be showing that off to my attendees uh, before they join my event. Super simple to do and can be a really powerful way to create engagement before your session has even started. Be sure to check out our next video, which covers event branding. It will go through our page builder feature and our email builder feature. Thank you as always for choosing Zoom events. Talk soon.